have joined us today and that you have separated this time to come and learn with me and Claudia Elliott because today I have uh, my amazing friend, uh, Claudia Elliott over here. And we're gonna be talking to you today about three strategies that we implement in our classes at the beginning of the school year uh, to help us rock the beginning of the school year. Um, and we cannot wait because we are determined to make the best of the situations that we're gonna have to encounter. And we want you to make the best too. So we wanna share everything with you. Uh, I'm gonna introduce myself because I know every week we have new members inside this group. And I am just honored that you have decided to uh, join this learning space. And I wanna uh, invite you to interact and ask questions and reach out if you need anything, make suggestions. Uh, my name is Berta Delgadillo and I teach high school in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, I teach Spanish two, Spanish three, and AP Spanish normally. And it looks like that way next year I'll also be teaching that. Uh, I've been teaching for seven years and I'm super passionate about a uh, pr proficiency driven mindset, instilling that in my students. And I'm also passionate about integrating uh, comprehensible input activities in my classes and that being the main ingredient in my classes. Uh, and I'm really, really, really super passionate about sharing with teachers. So thank you so much for being here tonight. And I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you to my friend, uh, Claudia Elliott, and I'm gonna let her tell you about, uh, tell, tell you about herself. Uh, so Claudia, welcome. Oh my gosh, Berta. Thank you so much for inviting me to your community. Uh, my name is Claudia Elliott. I am from Colombia, but I've been living in the United States since 2004, and I have been teaching since 2005. I teach high school. I have taught all the levels. I, ha I have taught level one, two, three. I haven't taught four, but I have taught a, a IB, International Baccalaureate, and I've taught AP Lang and AP Lit. So I think I have, have all the levels. And uh, this coming year, I'm gonna be teaching level one, uh, level three IB, and then my AP Lang class. So super excited to be here, uh, super excited to work with Berta. I think it's just, it's just great. Like we feed to each other, we uh, motivate each other, we inspire each other. And as Berta, I am very passionate to really um, just create an environment in my classroom where it's safe for my students to grow and to acquire a language. So le a second language acquisition has been like a very important aspect where I want to grow professionally, as well as a social emotional learning and support our students. So. Thank you for you know sharing this time with us, one hour with us this afternoon. Yes, we have uh, Claudia, Carolina, Angela, Maricela, Stephanie, Melinda, uh, Samantha, um, and uh, Mariela. So we have a, a quite a couple of people who you know checked in and say hello. And I know we have more people. Mary is over here too, of course, and Bethany is also over here. So welcome everyone. And we're gonna go ahead and get started um, because you know we wanna be mindful of your time also, and we're gonna get right to it. I think you need to share. Yeah, perfect. So today we had a great. We have been talking to Berta about this uh, for many months, and it is the first week of school. So uh, Berta had this brilliant idea to share with uh, with you what, what are our best three strategies, right? We don't want to overwhelm. We don't want to, we don't know. Like, I, I don't know exactly how my year is gonna look like. I don't think anybody really knows. So I think less is more. So we are gonna share our three best strategies, the must do strategies, for to rock that's first week so it's gonna be one less thing that we need to uh, worry about it so i know oh ooh, ooh, everything just moved in my in my screen but I, I got it and we have been becoming experts in like solving problems right <laughs> technology <laughs> Technology wise. So this was something about us. Uh, I didn't mention, but I have also a Facebook community that is called Growing with CI. And then if you want to 
uh, contact me. You can ha you can reach uh, to me in Twitter, Instagram. My handle is Claudia M. Elliot. And of course, Berta's uh, is Profe Delgadillo for Twitter and Instagram. And her blog, which is fantastic, is ProfesoraDelgadillo.com. But before we start, Berta, yes. we want to know how everybody is doing. So we really want you to maybe we want to invite you yep. yes. to, to respond today and let us know how you're doing. So type a five uh, if you're doing great or a four if you're doing well, three if you're okay, two if you're hoping that tomorrow's better, <laughs> and one, you, you, you just type a one if you don't want to talk about it. And um, and if you just don't want to talk about it, you know, I just want to say, oh, my God, you know, like you're here. You're here even if you're at a one. So okay. um, I'm seeing a lot of fours and fives um, and three. I just saw one three, one person said a two. So, uh, but mainly fours and fives. So we have, Evie uh, says two, but then Anna says five and three. So what about you, Berta? What would be your number? Today, I will be at a three. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. And, and and everything's great. It's just that I'm I'm a little I need to recharge a little bit more. I've been very active lately and I think my body is asking me to slow down a little bit. But I wanted to be here and I wanted to share these moments with my community because I know that many people who are logged in with us look forward to this moment. So I'm really glad that we are able to to do it. Yeah. So, and Mary saying I'm three because I'm brain stuff to overflowing with info to process. Mary, uh, we hear you. I think that is what is happening to a lot of us. But hopefully today you are going to live with a clear picture of at least your first week. And I don't know about you, Berta, but for me, uh, having my first week mapped out in my brain and ready to go is kind of like, oh. Yeah, okay. it, it just gives you that peace of mind. I'm, and, and, you know, I mean, because I've, we, you and I, Claudia, have been uh, pretty active this summer and we really haven't stopped. And But as I'm thinking about my first week, I'm really excited because I know what I've done in the classroom that has worked. And although I'm not going back to the classroom, I'm going to go back 100% virtual. I, I, I am happy and I'm able to, to read and know that what I do in a regular classroom setting, I'm going to be able to do it online uh, because, you know, of, uh, and I'm not going to get ahead, but because of the things that we're going to do and we're going to be sharing with you guys today. And because of that, I, I'm, I can breathe and I'm like, OK, I got the first week down. Now I need to start, you know, drafting maybe some ideas for units that I want to conduct later on. But right now it's just like I, I'm so excited to meet my kids and and we want you to have this excitement, too. So. Uh, that's why we're here to share with you. And we were talking about with Berta, why is that first week with your students so important? It's like, I think it's the week. I think the first, I mean, the first couple of weeks, but that first week, that first encounter with your students, the first time that you see them, the first time that they click and log in to be with you in Zoom, in Google Meet, I mean, or in your classroom, why is so important? And yes. I think it's kind of like a blind date yes, with and, our and, students, right? And I, and I don't know if you've been on on, on, on a one or a couple of those, but I've, I've, I've been on, on, on quite a few in the past, of course, way in the past. So <laughs> thanks God, right? Thanks God. Yeah, it's thanks. Way in the past. I don't know. But it is, it is truly like a play date. It's truly like the moment where we are going to sit and see each other for the first time. So that is huge. It is our first moment encounter with our students, and we just want to avoid uh, these type of things. I mean, I know that, you know, some of you have been in, 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 in blind dates, and you know what happened when things go wrong or maybe so, if you haven't been on one you know kind of what kind of stuff tends to go wrong maybe you have a friend who who's who's been on them and told you about it <laughs> so the first one is you know you go on a blind date and then you only talk about the menu like you only talk about the menu and what is in the menu 
and maybe even the price or oh, that would be terrible even the <laughs> price uh, and you know and you're just talking about that so how that would look in our classes Berta? how would be well if you only talk about the menu if you only talk about the menu that means that on the first uh, day of school the first week of school we're, we're focusing on because i used to do this i used to only talk about the menu my first week of school and it was terrible because i will deliver a five page syllabus <laughs> i mean and I, and I would take the whole class period to talk about it and <laughs> when all my other student all the other teachers well not all of them but a lot of the other teachers were going over that same information or you know more classes specific so by the time the students got to me and i was starting to do the same thing the students just had a face and I just needed to get through the content and I needed to tell them how things were gonna function in my class from day one. And if you don't do this, this is what's gonna happen. And nothing about them, just let me tell you about my rules. Let me tell you about how this, this is gonna work out. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't do this X, Y, and Z, this is the consequence. And we're not saying that there shouldn't be any rules, but not, during the first week, we want to suggest that you push that until like a later time. Um, I agree with you, Berta. And when you say five pages syllabus, I was, I thought that I was super organized because I have my five pages syllabus, my participation rubric. I had my uh, notebook rubric because I used to have a very specific way that I wanted to do my notebook. And it was a rubric with the instructions so i and, and i had color coded so i just gave them like this binder with all this information and not only i gave them to them i talk about it right yeah, yeah so that they get yeah that they could read but you know i mean we can also guarantee that they're gonna go home and read it but yes yes so that's the first thing so uh, you know we don't I, have I, to talk about the menu we we are not going to talk about the syllabus today but if just a quick tip that I want to throw in right now, uh, and I think I've mentioned it in the past. Whenever you get to do, to give the, your students the syllabus, instead of talking about it, I suggest you create a little scavenger hunt activity. You could do it on a Google form, mm -hmm. or you can do it on a separate piece of paper, and have them do a complete the scavenger hunt in the syllabus with mm -hmm. the syllabus in groups, and that's a lot more yeah. fun, and they're gonna soak it in. Mm -hmm i love to give it the syllabus to my students and put them in groups and then do like a kahoot yep and it will be like you know team building team about it. Mm -hmm. yes absolutely just something but i wasn't going to talk like i haven't talked about my syllabus for the last two years and i'm so thankful that i just yes. let the menu go yes so yes. yeah the menu is gone now yeah, we don't talk about the menu one, anymore <laughs> the second one is when you don't feel safe right like when you yeah. go to a blind date and you go and and it's like this serious person and it's like not you know the energy just, you're getting oh you're, there is no chemistry gosh. it's crazy yes you know yes. what claudia i have an amazing friend i'm not gonna mention her name uh, <laughs> i'm sure she wouldn't mind if i did it but i'm just not however i remember she went on a blind date once and she i knew well not once a few times also so I know that when she was going on a date, if she sent me her location and she activated her location for me, I knew it was not going to be a good date. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, really, truly, it's like really scary. I mean, like, I'm telling you, I know, I don't know, but, you know, if, if somebody told you, I felt sick to my stomach every time that I went to a blind date. I just didn't know what to expect. And then you just look at the person and like, oh my gosh. And if you feel, you don't feel safe, that is the worst. I mean, that was the worst feeling ever. So, so sometimes in our classrooms, even if we have the best intentions, we can make our students feel not safe. So for example, when we come, with the consequence and we're gonna say in this class we're gonna do x y and c or you're gonna get a referral or don't even dare to speak one word in english or you know mm -hmm. i'm gonna call your mom or the first time that you know a kid comes and maybe just looking and then you look at the kid and you just say berta delgadillo you're looking at your phone right now right and mm -hmm. then you pick up the phone and call the mom like you feel like in panic 
mode. Like just, oh my God, I'm just so, so afraid. Or I mean, and, and we have to be just like with everything else. If we want to make any changes in our teaching, because we know we need to be working towards specific changes. Like this year, I want to be more intentional, even more intentional with social emotional learning in my class. But, you know, we also have to be intentional the coming the first day of school to our students, whether it's online or in the classroom, enthusiastically, you know, just radiating that energy that we cannot wait to get to know them, that that we that we want to establish relationships with our students and really get to know them because there's such power in those relationships and through the knowledge of students of our students, we can then later on determine what uh, units we're gonna be teaching in the future that's gonna maintain them engaged in, in our classes. And it's just a recipe for success to build those relationships, but they're not gonna open up if they don't feel safe. Yeah, so. I mean, feeling safe is, is it is like paramount. Uh, for me, making my students feel safe, it is extremely important. And also, Berta, because if you think about it, it's not only about the students, it's about us. Yes. Especially when we are bringing so many new strategies in our classroom, right? So when you come and you're gonna do a one word image, that is something that they don't do in other classes. Or what about a story asking? Or what about, you know, like you, you yourself as an instructor, as the as the leader in your class, you are gonna try a lot of things that you may learn this summer. So you need to fix it. So I think it's both ways, and I agree with Berta about the energy. And I think ma now more than ever, I think when we are online, we have to be super intentional online. Uh, like for example, even if your students don't want to have the video, just say their name. So even if Berta doesn't have her video, like Berta, I know you're there. I am so excited that you're here. Absolutely. And, and, and even and even. The and even that student who's not there, call his name or her name because when that child, if that child watches the recording later on, that child is gonna remember, oh, my teacher noticed that I wasn't there. And you know, when you call that student's name who's not there, say, oh, we know this person's not here, but hi, such and such. And, and that is gonna be yeah. so special to that child. And I guarantee you that child is gonna make an extra effort to show up for your class later on. Because yeah. a lot of my students, even even in the school building, sometimes would tell me because you know I would say, "Oh, we miss you yesterday." You know, when I do the passwords at the beginning of the of the class, mm -hmm. I, I always if they were not there yesterday, I say, "Oh, I, we miss you yesterday." And the students would, would always tell me, "You always know when I'm not here." And and sometimes they'll say, "Well, other teachers don't even know that I'm not there. They mark me present." <laughs> I did the same, like when we went in March, I did a live session for my students and I was going to say, oh my God, Angela is not here today. Anybody knows where Angela is? I mean, the class is not going to be the same without Angela. And I mean, I'm telling you four out of five, Angela came because somebody texts Angela and say, Angela, mm -hmm. La Senora Elliot is looking for you. And I just, I went through my roster and I said, oh my gosh, I don't see Sara. So where is Sara? Anybody? Know? And somebody's like, oh, she's in the doctor. Oh, she went to this. I'm like, okay, please tell her that we miss her. And all those little details build and build yes. and build and build yes. they, and they, they, they make a statement in, in the chat in the children's life. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about blind days, going wrong. First, when we only talk about the menu, we only focus on our rules, syllabus, what we're going to cover, the curriculum, the 25 exams that we're going to have, the homework, all that. So that is just really a bad recipe. When we are not welcoming to our students, so when we don't make our students feel safe that first day, and then when we don't show any interest for the other person, what about when you go on a blind date and the person just talks and talks and talks about themselves. And talks about themselves. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it's just all about themselves. I feel it's the same in the classroom. When we come to the classroom and we talk about our rules and we talk about our book and we tell them what they need to bring and about us a little bit, 
and then nothing about them. It is, it is just, and sometimes that can go class one, class two, class three. I had the, last year we were in a conference with, you know, with my department and one teacher had my students and I was telling her and she like, you know all that about your students? And I say, don't you? And she's like, no, I mean, you're talking about your students like they're part of your family. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, yes, yeah. don't you? Like, I know who's working. I know mm -hmm. who's playing sports. Where they I work. Who has, I know who has a girl. I have a student, Berta, and everybody that just texts me. He's a senior, so I, didn't, I couldn't see him. But he just texts me and say, guess what? I have a girlfriend. And I want you to meet her. I like, yeah. I mean, and and that's kind of like what happened, right? It's just, yep. it's just evolved and yep. and it's beautiful. I, I had students who have messaged me over the summer, emailed me over the summer, just to see how I was doing. And I just think that you know that that is amazing because it just shows the how deep the relationships were built with them, um, and and I, I love it. Yeah. So we are going to, a couple of the strategies, the strategies that we're going to share is just to like really tackle this no-no. And the final one is like when we are either boring or unapproachable. Uh, that is just a red flag for our students. And I've been talking about it uh, a lot lately uh, when we're talking about comprehensible input and a comprehensible input and acquisition driven class, a lot of teachers have the, the image that we have to be on entertaining, like we have to be, you know, singing or, you know, actors. And I think one difference is being interesting or interested and engaging and engage and different entertaining. So it doesn't have to be Oh, I mean, like, I think we need to be us, right? You need to be mm -hmm. you. We all need to find our voice as a teacher, but really thinking to be interesting and interested, engaging and engage in that class. I mean, that is the class, that first be, week, the class. Be present in that class, because yeah. I know during my first years of teaching, many times I realized that I would assign my students uh, work. I would teach, you know, what I needed to teach at the time before I um, I stumbled upon uh, CI activities. And before I started digging deep into uh, second language acquisition, I would, you know, do my my lesson and would assign, give them the assignments from the book. And then I would go to my desk and I was not present. Mm -hmm. I would go and check on their work or I would have them come, you know, show me their work, but I wasn't present. And it was wasted time because I was not building relationships. That was when the students are doing independent work. No, there's no rule that says you can't walk around the room and go build relationships with your students yeah. in the target language in, or in English. Yeah. Preferably in the target language, of course, but you know what I mean? Yes. And I, I mean, a hundred percent, hundred percent being present, like looking at their eyes, just like knowing I am seeing you. I, I, I know Angela. I know Rebecca. I know Stephanie. I know Kelly that you are here and I appreciate that you are here. And it's, it's just, it's just kind of like relationship with your friends. I mean, it's when you go with your friends and talk and have a conversation and you're present and you're looking and you're asking questions and you say, oh my gosh, that's a new share. I love it. It's so cute. Oh, yeah, you cut yeah. your hair. Oh, wow. I mean, it's just not, it's not like or, a lot of plan. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I want to, uh, you know, just highlight uh, Kelly's message. She said, you know, well, no, no, it was not that one. It was this one. Uh, that's why I love teaching languages. It's all about human connections. And we have talked about how just, you know, blessed we are to, to be able to make our students our curriculum and, and their interests and, mm -hmm. and be able to, you know, we can become an art teacher. We can become uh, a social studies teacher. We can be all through, through what we do every day as world language teachers. Yeah. So I love that. And I think I, I think we we cannot uh, 
when we talk about connections and when we talk about relationships and when we're talking about welcoming our students and when we're talking about being engaged and being engaging, I think we're not talking about being best buddies with our students. We're not talking about not having high expectations because something that I feel uh, my students respect a lot in my class is that I do have super high expectations and mm -hmm. my high expectation is that they need to give me 200 percent because they know that i give them 200 percent and 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 i think that is a beautiful like you know it's a two-way relationship it's not like i'm giving them everything and all the time i'm asking them questions no i mean it is it is a very healthy relationship with your students when you give your best as a teacher and they give you their best as a student. And making this connection since day one, it will serve you so well. Uh, I don't know if some, somebody was in my um, uh, session yesterday with Tan Hyang uh, from Vietnam and he was talking about social emotional learning and he said, if we are only teaching our content, if we are only focusing on that menu, we're teaching half of the curriculum. We're really not talking to that human aspect that Kelly was mentioning before. So it's your first week. We have to be on. That is the first week. It is so important. Remember, it's like a blind date. You're meeting your students. So how we're going to do this? we are yes, going to... we have to tell them because we have some people already asking how do you do that <laughs> especially remotely so when does a blind day run when you say like yeah this is like a great person i want to hang out with this person more i'm really interested so these are three strategies and we are going to give you actionable activities it's not like you know be nice <laughs> it's gonna be actionable so we have three to share with you today so we have uh get to know our students we already emphasized the importance of that um build a team mindset through proficiency and then the third one would be strengthening relationships with star student interviews okay so here you are these are the three these are the three that we really invite you to dig deeper and really put in place that first week of class so let's talk about us uh, and this is a very important aspect uh, <clears throat> we cannot ask our students to open up with us unless we open up first we you don't trust a person that you don't know mm -hmm. you just don't you 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 don't you don't open the door of your class of your house if you don't know the person as a matter of fact when you have like the anonymous id like it's not like an, a, a phone number that is recognized by your phone you sometimes don't even pick and, it and up. even and claudia even with your friends sometimes when you are in a close circle of friends and you want to share an experience sometimes you're like i wonder if they've gone through that too and then once you realize they have gone through that then you are more than likely to open up even with your own friends um, yeah. but you want to know what you know how they feel about the same situation so it is something that is again it's about human connections is is we 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 cannot ask our students to open up to trust us unless they know us first so this is our first activity this is something that berta and i do every single year and i do it in all my levels and i use same. my same pictures same but here. i change the language so again i have three preps and i'm not going to do anything different everything my first week is going to be the same but the language is different so what we do is we prepare a very comprehensible presentation about ourselves with compelling and you know if you have cute pictures <laughs> that will help and funny and interesting facts about ourselves so yes. that is the first it doesn't have to be long right remember we, we don't want to talk about us all the time but we just need to give them the first week something about us 
Uh, I love, I have two boys uh, and they're super, you know, crazy and they go saying, you know, they just drive me crazy. So the first week I'm going to tell them where I'm from. I'm going to tell them that I have two boys and both of them are, and I just exaggerated a little bit and I say they're terrible, they're crazy and they laugh. And then I talk about my husband and I share how ugly he is and uh, how he is so annoying and drive me crazy. I, I I have the complete opposite about my husband, Claudia. <laughs> I was like, I have the most handsome husband. <laughs> and, I, and I say, and, and I say, and by the way, um, you know, he's a, he's a couple years younger than me. And I teach high schoolers. I get their attention in the target language, and then we start guessing how, how much younger he is. <laughs> how many years? <laughs> But see, isn't that like a hook? They already know that you made them, you don't tell them everything, you tell them a little bit, you just have these pictures, have something interesting to say about you, something maybe funny. And I think the, this builds up throughout the year. So my former students asked me, so how is Lucas doing? How is Mattel doing? Is uh, Mr. Elliot, so they call him Mr. Elliot. Is Mr. Elliot still coaching football? Oh, is he doing this? Are they doing this? And throughout the years, you start opening up. It's not like you open your life, like, you know, because you want your privacy, of, of course. course, but just sharing with them and, and being vulnerable with them it is so important. Absolutely. And, and you know, I share things like one of my hobbies, like I love dancing. I love dancing bachata and salsa. And then later on, get to know all of that music because I bring my friends, the instructors from the community to come teach them. Uh, and then I also tell them the countries I visited and, you know, where I'm from. I mean, just little things like that. So um, it's really engaging. And just with that comment, even though, you know, maybe some people are going to think, well, that's that's a little bit, you know, uh, it might be inappropriate. It's not inappropriate for the high school students. Um, and then, but like I said, through that comment, they're, they're, I have their interest, they're hooked, they forget that I'm speaking to them in Spanish and they're trying to guess the age difference and they're relaxed. They're laughing with me. And, they are. and yeah. They are, they are, and they ask me, is your husband Colombian? And I say, look at him. Do you think that he's Colombian? Like, no, like, I know, I know, right? I know what I was thinking. And they love, and they, and they just, they just, just little things that really start creating that relationship. It's just like when you go on a date with a friend and you start talking about your life and you just, are so relatable, right? Because sometimes our students think that Professora Delgadillo is somebody like out there, but Professora Delgadillo is a mom, is a wife, is a daughter, is a friend, and she cries and she laughs and she dances and she's vegan and she has all these things that make Professora Delgadillo Professora Delgadillo. So it's like Tan was saying that we need to be human. Oh my gosh, I love Samantha Page a uh, 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 comment. She said, my fiance's name is Loki. My kids are always like, Senorita, Loki is lucky to have you. <laughs> That's so cute. Okay, so that is what we invite you to do the first day, prepare a small presentation, nothing big. Remember, we don't want to be all about ourselves and we definitely don't want to be all the time talking and have a big menu. So less is more. Mm -hmm. Now, the second part, which is extremely important, is we need to find out about our students. We need to find out about who we have in our classrooms. Uh, that is paramount. I, I mean, that is just extremely important. And the first week is the week that you want to find out all the information. I have created, um, a, it was like a, a, um, a Word document, uh, but this year I'm planning to put it digital. And Berta already put it digital. So when we share this presentation, if you click on Berta says a survey, it's going to make a copy for you. But I have questions about the name uh, and then what name they preferred, 
what pronoun they want me to use, how is their family, I want them to share something about the family, uh, where are they from, uh, do they speak only, what languages do they speak at, at home, and then what motivates them, right? Like, what is your favorite music? What do you like to watch uh, on TV? And what sports do you practice? And I always like to know, like, how would you describe yourself? How would your friends describe you? And this is very important in my class. Absolutely. I, I And like I said, I asked them, I want to know, you know, what kind of, how many computers they have, if they have technology at home. I want to know where do they work, if they have a job, what, uh, you know, their athletics, what are they involved uh, in, who's their favorite person in the entire world. I get really personal. However, I tell them that they don't have to tell me the answers, but that I please, like I almost beg them in the class, please, 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 you know, I want to get to know you. I really look through this I, I, and, you know, this and I explained to them how it important it is in my classroom. And after that disclaimer, because I guess they see my my desire to get to know them, they all complete everything. And I tell them that it's going to be information just for me. And I maintain it that way. And I think that is something that I have learned to do. Like as soon as they do this and they share information with with my, with me, I look through it and I start being very intentional. Right? Like, you know, since they want that you're gonna have an instant chemistry with some of your students, it's gonna be like boom. Absolutely. Yep. It's like, and, and with some others, it's gonna take a couple of days and weeks exactly. to build. And and you know, you you might have a student who is is gonna you know be challenging at the beginning but if with patience and investing in that student and with building that relationship you're going to get through that i'm telling you because i had in my teaching career maybe i had i had one last semester who uh, at the beginning i was praying every morning before i went into that class and i was able to build such a beautiful relationship with her and even two days ago she sent me a message asking me if I could, she, she apologized for her. She's like, I know it's your summer and everything, but could you please write a recommendation letter for me? Um, because I, I, you are the one teacher I have a true relationship with. And you know, Berta, when you said that, usually those students are the students who have bad relationships with all the teachers. So if you can be that teacher, you can see that teacher, you know, passing the attitude, right? Because some students have that attitude that they want to put on to protect themselves mm -hmm. because yep. they don't trust anybody. So yep. sometimes when we are persistent and when we dig deeper and we can really create a relationship, you are going to be the person. You are going to be the person. So I mean, relationships I take time to build in general. Yeah. Oh, and oh. and they need different, you know, every student is different and every student is going to need something different to, to for that relationship to be established with you as a teacher. Um, and, and, you know, some students, like you say, it's going to be an instant connection and those students are going to be, oh, my God, you know, what I mean, but but eventually you, you're you going to be able to build a relationship with all if you're intentional. Uh, if we, you're have, intentional. Exactly. We, we, we have we um, have. Several people had the same question. They are saying that they had the same students over the last years. Okay. What do we suggest for this I year? I have the same because I have a, uh, I have freshmen and then they go for the second year with another teacher and then they come back from me as a juniors. And what I do, so it's not like constant, you know, like every year. So what I ask them to do is like, are you playing any new sports? Uh, what are you uh, planning to do this year? And for me, are juniors. So it's like, what are you thinking that you're gonna do uh, for college? What colleges are you thinking that you're gonna apply? What are gonna be the sports that you're gonna be doing? So new, new questions, but the teachers were also asking as far as like when you present about yourself and you have the same students, so if, if you had the same students, would you change something about your presentation? I do. I do change it for my presentation. For my junior year, I focus more on my last year because it was the, the year that were, they weren't with me or for the summer. So I tell them because usually my second year are going to be my ad a little bit more advanced students. So I'm going to tell them something specific about my summer. And I always, you know, have projects for the summer. 
and they know that I'm always trying to create something. I'm like, so what are you doing now? And I'm like, oh, when I start running, I told them that I started running during the summer. When I was to start doing yoga, I started doing yoga during the summer. I went to Colombia and I told them about Colombia. So I do change, I take pictures of my kid's birthday because my oldest one is August, right before. And they all want to know how big he is, how, you know, if he finally got the cell phone that I have refused to give it to him and if he so every year like okay so he turned 12 and like did he get a phone like no you didn't and they thought that they think that i'm just a horrible person yes uh, oh. rebecca is giving a suggestion she's saying how about what you used to like or do that's good for upper levels if you in your presentation instead they already know you then you can focus with like uh what you used to be like or what you used to like or what you used to do uh, or what are not your favorite things to do so you can change the focus of that presentation uh instead of talking about yourself i mean it's still the topic about you but shift the focus to something like kind of like what rebecca is suggesting over here i think that's a great suggestion yeah so I think uh, it is, uh, I, I have um, um, uh, another comment. I have made a Jeopardy board about my life. Yes, that's awesome when we play games with them since they won, it is great. Uh, so I feel like how much we share about us, it is up to us. So yes. I, have, I see, I read a comment say, so I'm gay and I don't feel comfortable sharing with my students unless they ask. I think, we are going to share whatever makes us feel comfortable to share. There are things that I'm not going to share with my students. <laughs> there are truths about me that I'm not about to share with my students. And sometimes they ask me more personal questions and I feel sometimes that I can share, sometimes that I don't. So I think it depends on us. But the fact that we are there sharing something with them is already opening the door. And I was going to tell some, say something about the survey. So this survey you do at the first or the second day of class or as soon as you get your student, because I don't know in your class, in your school, but in my school, I get new students every day, like the first two weeks. So my roster is not really solid the first two weeks. So my advice is to keep this mm -hmm. information. And when you start finding a student eh, that you are not having that connection and that student says that they like, I don't know, Beyonce, in the next, the first chance that you have, you're gonna bring Beyonce in your curriculum. The first time that you have, you are gonna talk about football or soccer or whatever like you need to go and find that survey and keep it with you because this is what you're gonna reach out to your student and you're gonna tell your student and you're gonna tell alma alma we may not have the best connection but i see you yeah absolutely absolutely and and it's making sure that the students feel seen and heard in the classroom and it, that's what it's all about the first uh week we have a, qu a couple of questions and i just want to clarify uh especially for those people that this is the first time you're watching a live in my uh in the group um i i shared a pdf with the files at the end of the presentation so at the end of the presentation you're going to I, i'm going to share the pdf on the comments and then I'm also going to upload it to the group so you will have access to the presentation. And once you click on the presentation, if you click on, uh, on the picture of the Google form, it's gonna take you to make a copy of my Google survey. And because you're gonna be able to make a copy, you're gonna be able to change it and edit it. So if there are questions that you, know, you teach middle school and you do not like these questions, then you can take them out. You don't have to mm -hmm. use use it and you can also click on claudia's right claudia and they're going to have access to your stuff I, well. I can make it i can make it a hat link too uh, mm -hmm. this is a word document that i was planning to put in google uh, in google form but i didn't have time so I, i'm going to try to to put it there uh, but anyways don't lose the survey this survey every time that you have some issue with a student some it's student that you cannot reach this is where you're going to find all the the information that is gonna help you make the connection another survey that i use as we are talking about this that i also use with my students and i conduct this one and i just do it in english and and sometimes i just give it to them for homework and um 
I have them completed. It's called The Five Love Languages. I don't know if you're familiar with that book, The Five Love Languages. And it's an amazing book. Uh, and it's about relationships. But there's a five love languages for children, a five love languages for teens. Well, online, if you go on Google and you search the five love languages for teens, you can find an online quiz and you can give your students the link and tell them uh, you can make a little Google form so they can share their results and they can tell you what the top number one love language is, the second one and the third. So what do they mean by word language? I mean, a love language. So a love language is like the way you feel loved. And uh, there's like words of affirmation. So if your love language is words of affirmation, that means that, you know, praise in the classroom would totally fill your love tank. So I like to find out that information because if a lot of my students say words of affirmation um, mean a lot to my students, then that means that I need to like bump up my praise game with that class. And I also on, on the same token, I also need to watch what comes out of my mouth because with your love language, you can reach that person, but you can also destroy that person with your words because if my class pays attention to words, I always have to make sure that I use the words to, to praise them and that I don't use the words to put them down. And oh, yeah. another another reason why I love using this tool as well is because I can restore relationships quicker. So if, for example, Michaela and I had a disagreement because I am human and I can upset my students, I'm not saying I have a perfect class, I can go find out, uh, look up on my files, you know, what's her love language and I can try to, you know, come to her to restore that relationship using her love language. So yeah. I absolutely love that. That's another idea. It's not link or anything, just go on Google and search uh, love languages quiz for teens and and if, after the presentation i will also link it on the comments as well and I, and i think that is the point right berta is like your friends is like your family you're building relationships you know uh, if you are if you have a disagreement with a friend you know what to do you know what to say to kind of like make up with that person because you want that so i feel it just it just replicates, right? It replicates our relationships, our connections, when you feel love. I mean, I know that, you know, Berta and I, I feel like so loved when my students come and they praise my my sweater or my shoes or when they smile at me or when they are with me with their eye contact or when they send me anything. Like, it, it just, it feels great. I mean, oh, it yeah. is it feels great and uh, we have been talking about that with berta a lot and is the importance of always saying uh, the name of our students in a positive way at least once uh, per day and then if you have and there's another research saying that if you have a difficulty or or, or you know like your, your connection with a student is not really strong uh, spend two minutes two minutes a day so, for 10 days two minutes a day for 10 days talking to the student about something that is not related to the class because sometimes we can we just need to focus on that connection and sometimes we're not ready for the content so that is why it's so important to get to know your students know who you have in your class know what what they're passionate about what is important to them and i think that will just Make your year so much, much better. Oh yes. my God. <laughs> and and you know, and and if you're wondering, well, you know, if we're gonna start online, it, it it is possible to build relationships online. Claudia and I just completed um the conference in the cloud. We taught the AP pre AP Spanish lab, and we only had five hours with this uh, children, and they absolutely. I mean, they loved us and we loved them. And it was so sad to say goodbye to them. And it was just five hours and we were able to build strong relationships. And I know that there were about 22 other language labs mm -hmm. and those teachers had five hours for with those students and they all built amazing relationships. So it can be done. Uh, you can build yeah. relationships of line with your students. You just have to mm -hmm. be intentional about it. Yes, and I and I'm talking about the the conference and talking about the welcoming. Uh, Bert and I received the email of one of our students uh, the night before we started and say, "I'm very anxious, I'm very nervous, and I hate to be on video." 
I hate it. Uh, I please do not ask me to be on video. And we're like, you know, of course, no worries, but we would love to see you. I think that lasted one class. The rest of the classes, she was on video all the time. She emailed us. Her teacher emailed us. We had e we had emails from all the te all the students. Well, for most of the students, and we had videos, um, like tes well, not testimonials, but just videos of of their experience from all of our students. It was beautiful. And on top of that. I didn't even tell the students that I had an Instagram account. I just pulled up my account to find somebody's account. And I had about five of the students who followed me. And now they're responding to my stories in the target language. And these are just students that we had for five days. It is It is totally intentional. It's about, uh, it's about being intentional. It's about understanding that they are as human as we are and they are kids right they are 14 and 15 and remember we're in the first week you are nervous i am nervous no matter how many years i've been every teaching, year we get nervous it's okay years, and it's, it's normal to feel nervous the first week super normal i feel nervous and i always think if i'm nervous imagine them imagine if you have like ninth graders or sixth graders or seventh graders coming to a new school from a new town so the emotions are like really really like on their skin like it's just right there so if we take advantage and we make them feel safe and we and we talk about us and we talk about them it's just it, it, it's a recipe for a great year okay so time is coming short so yep. <laughs> let's talk about this uh, uh, strategy and is teen mindset through proficiency oh my gosh this is has changed my class throughout the year in terms of grades and in terms of parents uh, concerns about grades in terms of kids asking me about the B or the A or the C. Like I, last year, I didn't have one conference. It was the year with no conference whatsoever with parents concerned about grades. So what we do is we create a mini lesson about proficiency. And uh, we also use our wall space to display the proficiency path. And again, it's been intentional, right? Because our class can look pretty and it can have a lot of posters and be amazing, but we need to use it. We need to be intentional. And when you have that a proficiency path in your classroom on your walls and you're all the time referring to that, it will just totally change the mindset and talk and model proficiency at all times that will help you tremendously in the class and yes. this is the picture of Bertas's uh, uh, board yes it's very simple and i did a facebook live here um, maybe about three weeks ago uh, and it's a whole hour long explaining step by step how I teach proficiency, a proficiency driven mindset to my students, how I instill that in my classroom. Um, so if you, because that is actually a whole other, uh, you know, workshop session, Facebook Live, but I already did it a couple of weeks ago. So if you scroll through the Facebook page, you'll be able to find that presentation. It's called Soaring Student Engagement Through Proficiency Driven Mindset. And in that presentation, uh, the the uh, people who attended received the PowerPoint that has the links to access this same board that I have. You can just print it and then put it together. And I actually gave links to two separate ones, so you can use the one that you like. And like Claudia said, what I do every time I'm doing an activity, like a major activity or an assessment, I address my class and I tell them because if I know that Spanish three is from novice, high, if they're novice high, I have novice high, I have intermediate low, I have intermediate mid and intermediate high. Then when I'm when we're about to do an assessment, I said, okay, you know, my students who are novice high, focus on this. My students who are intermediate low, okay, this is what we're trying to do. This is the level we're trying to achieve. So we need to move towards integrating this and and you know and so on. So I'm able to 
address all my students' needs or, well, not address their needs, but get them to focus on the performance that they that they need to be striving towards because of the well, level where they're at. Yeah, it's like it's about their growth. And and I and I was reading an essay by Mike Pito the other day about grades, and then he said that he had like really a hard time wrapping his mind uh, around grading for uh, word languages because he feels that when a kid comes to your class and gives everything but the kid doesn't develop at the speed or at the pace that is expected, then you are kind of penalizing the kid. And then he made a great example. He said, it's like if you failed your kid because they didn't, uh, I don't know, uh, walk at the same time. Mm -hmm. So if one of your kids walk at age, uh, you know, when they were eight, 18 months, 16 months or whatever, and the other, Two months later, then the grade is going to be different if both of them are doing the same. So this proficiency really helps because it's about what you can do. And they push. And I see my students saying now, like, okay, so, senora, any ideas on how I can elaborate more? Do you think that I can use maybe different tenses here? I mean, the conversation is different. And they don't see me as the villain anymore. They don't see me as like, oh, you want to get me. Because I don't only talk about proficiency. I don't only a grade using rubrics based on proficiency, but I also let them retake. So it's all about growth and not I got you game. So this proficiency, it is absolutely amazing. And it will just change and it will really support the growth of your students. Berta, we are 56 minutes and we have so much to cover still. Yes, so let's get through it, Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> let's get through it. Uh, so, uh, we talk about getting, uh, letting our students know us and create a simple presentation about yourself with compelling pictures and interesting facts. Second, we told you to uh, survey your students so you can find out information to start creating those relationships. Then we're going to talk and we're going to create the first week, our first mini lesson about proficiency. And we are going to use proficiency throughout the school year. We're going to talk proficiency. We're going to model proficiency. We're going to show our students how to move up. And so they are focused on growth. Third one favorite activity ever law prep activity activity that you can do with all your students all your preps you don't have to do different things star student interview isn't this like the most successful activity that you have had in the last couple of years berta yep i absolutely absolutely love the community it builds how profoundly i can get to know my students and just the language that my students acquire i mean it's just it's a win-win for everyone yes it is amazing so this is what i do i pre i prepare a powerpoint with a set of questions i focus on like maybe eight no more than 10 questions per student because then it's too long. But I have like a bank of a student of questions and every day I'm gonna change a little bit my questions. So I have one for my novice class and I have one for my intermediate class. The questions are a little bit different because the language is different. Now in my novice one, this is a Spanish one, they never took Spanish before, they don't know anything. So all my questions are gonna have the translation uh, below the question. So, for example, I'm going to say, oh, como te llamas? I, I'm pointing to the translation, right? What's your name? But if I'm asking you, como te llamas? And you know what I'm asking you, you all can answer, right? Joanna can answer, Samantha can answer, Angela can answer. I mean, everybody, Teresa can answer because it's your name. And it is like, okay, so all my questions are going to be answered by one word that I'm prompting my student, like, oh, see, no, like, 
¿Te gusta la escuela? Do you like the school? And I say, ¿sí o no? And they say, oh, sí, or say no. But I'm prompting them, right? Because it's level one. Now, the, I never force this. They volunteer. The first day I have your outspoken kid, maybe had some experience with the language before, he wants to go and they go. The next day I start having more, more hands. The third day more hands. And then it's like, I haven't done. I, can, can we do it again? After like three weeks, like, okay, no, we're gonna do something different. <laughs> but they want to be there. And again, it's not only about the student who is sitting in front of the classroom. It's about everyone. Because when I say, what is your favorite show in Netflix? And he's going to say, Stranger Things. And I turn to the class and I say, Clase, te gusta Stranger Things? And I'm going to have some like, oh, yeah, I like it too. Everybody, it, 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 builds, it builds so much community because they find out they find out that, you know, the person they least thought had something in common with them actually has more than they thought common in, uh, with them. So it yeah. builds relationships that would not have been built because of the questions. And not only that, I love how you can teach. You don't have to teach months of the year. You don't have to teach the numbers. That's the beauty of CI. I love how it. I can teach my students the numbers through the birthdays, through the and the months through the birthdays, so the questions about the birthdays. Yeah. Or, I mean, just. I mean, like when we're talking about grades. Uh, I mean, the numbers like first, second, third, fourth. You know, cardinal and ordinal numbers. Uh, you can teach the numbers like that with persona especial or star student interview, whatever you want to call it. Um, it is yes, yes, Berta, all that because you ask your student. Okay, so. ¿Cuántos años tienes? How old are you? And of course, they don't know. They don't know anything. They know read in English their questions, so they understand. And you say, oh, tienes 13. And you show them 13. ¿Sí o no? And they say, and then who else? ¿Quién tiene 13? So you go back to the class, and then you're still finding out that you have maybe ninth grade to kids with 13, and then tons with 14, and then few with 15. So Again, you are building the relationship. I love to ask questions about pop culture, right? So I don't know, I don't have a clue. I have to ask my kids, I have to ask people to help me, but you know, movies, who is your favorite Avenger? Oh my gosh, that is like a fantastic question. What do you prefer? Do you prefer iPhone or Android? Uh, do you prefer, I mean, like, it's just so many questions that you can ask. And I think one question that we have is, who do you choose? I don't. I say, necesito un voluntario. I say, I need an, an, a volunteer. And I have a brave person that is going to raise a hand every time. And then he's the first one. And after that, oh, man, I usually do it for birthdays. Like, who is the next birthday? Like, when I have, like, five kids trying to be the star student and uh, uh, to have this to be in the star student interview i had that okay so what is to cumpleaños and whose birthday is the closest to the day that is the one that i select because they all want to go and the questions have the uh when you give them the questions you give them the questions you can give them the questions beforehand just so that they know what the questions are and in the questions, they have the English of what it means. Um, and then it, they, they, I mean, they can completely answer it. If they don't have to know anything to answer it. And like you said, Claudia, the student can, the first day you have maybe, you know, you, you get one student, but then later on, everybody wants to do it because they just know how much fun it is. And they know, they feel so comfortable with it. Uh, and I love it. So somebody was asking earlier, who gets to be the star of the day? Everybody gets to be the star of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. And if you take pictures with your students after the interview, like Claudia, I mean, it can build so beautiful collages for the class. Oh, it's beautiful. It's extremely beautiful what you do with this. And I know that uh, Berta put the Kara Jacobs, but also uh, Bryce Henstrom. It has a um, PDF. If you kind of Google it, Bryce Henstrom, a special person interview, he has everything. He has like 100 questions 
for all the levels and and the process that he follows again you're gonna find whatever works for you it was like i have a bank and i rotate the questions because i don't want to ask the same questions for my students so i have like basic information now this is the beauty of this this is your first week i'm telling you this is your two first two weeks it can be your first three weeks if you can really focus on this to create language so what i do is i do my star student interview and then we talk and we said okay so let's find out how we talk about do it today so let's write and i ask my students to write while i write and this is a, a, a write and discuss activity that i learned from mike pito but i know that a lot of educators use this uh, strategy. So I have my class and I say, so como se llama el chico? What is his name? And then they say, oh, it's Dewey. And I say, oh, I, there is a chico. And I create a um, um, text like you see uh, on the slide. And that's my first text. And I do this probably the first or the second day of Spanish. And I keep it short sometimes because my class couldn't give me much, but then there's some classes that are gonna give you more information. So my text look a little bit longer. And the next day of class, I bring again that text and I have like a lesson. It's just- You can have a lesson. You can play the marker uh, partner game. You can play a, a gym kit. If you pr make a gym kit or a Kahoot or something with the information. I mean, there's you can do a little quick formative assessments based on 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 what you co-create with your students. It's pretty amazing, and then it's amazing to them because it makes them feel successful. It oh, makes yeah. the student who does the interview feel so successful, and the students who read along with you through that paragraph and they can read it and understand it. And if their previous year they had, you know, just absolutely not a great experience in their class now they're reading and they understand with you and they trust you and they trust you in the process and they just want to learn more from you it is it is it is incredible and here is the first unit so the first unit is getting to know each other that is my first unit uh, i run it for three weeks it is super successful all my kids are super successful because i'm relentless i'm gonna make it comprehensible 100 percent. no matter where you are i'm gonna get you and we have the best time and like berta say they feel like rock stars because my first unit is about them and is and then when they have like the summative assessment my paragraphs is about the students in class and we are just having these narrow readings with students in class so this is i mean i, I this is i could I could do my first three weeks every three weeks. So this is the last activity that we have for today, but we want, so let's recap, right? So we are in a blind date. It is your first week of school. We want to create connections. We want to build a trust. We want to build that human aspect. aspect. So we need to get uh, to know each other and you are going to present you're going to create a presentation or we create a, a really small presentation about ourselves there were great ideas about playing a code playing jeopardy with your information that is fantastic mm -hmm. then you are going to serve with your students you we are going to give a mini lesson about proficiency so we start the conversation is not going to stop there it's just the beginning and then we build with the star student interview book is a success it's a success so now what i want you to share with us is this i want you to share based on what we talk about it either a red light a yellow light or a green light so a red light would be some practice that you did in the past that you say yeah i'm not going to do this this year like is i i'm not, I'm not going to do that year so that can be a red light or you can share a yellow light and a yellow light is like let me think about it i think that i can do that let me think about it so you are not totally so you just have your you know you're thinking about it and a green light is something that you are gonna do that first week so if you can share that in the chat it would be amazing And I think I lost my, 
I cannot see the lives in my phone anymore. So I think my phone is dead. Okay, so we have a green light and it says it's going to be a green light. We have make a presentation about myself with a follow up game. That's a green light. Yes, that is a great one. Uh, another green light over here. Uh, love all the information. Share feeling much better. Less stress. Less stressed out about the first week. Yay! You know that's just like, honestly, we're so happy. That's why we wanted to target this topic today because we've seen the comments and and we just wanted to help and tell you it. We really can start a year stress free. We really can, or you know we can only do what's in our control, and this is in our control. What we do with the students the first week. Yeah. Um, uh, we have la green, la persona especial. Yay! Yay! And then we have a yellow, Maria Temp special person with incoming seventh graders, even though it bumped with last year's group. Samantha, I did, when I started implementing classroom jobs the first time, it bombed in my class. It, it was terrible. And then I tried it again, and it was a success. And I will not let go of classroom jobs ever since yeah. then. I know that's a different thing than persona especial, but what I'm trying to get to is that you can try one thing one time and, and it goes terrible, but it, don't give up on it. Uh, especially if you keep hearing people talk wonders about it, just try it again patiently, uh, you know, and, and, and then it, it, let us know how it goes. So we have, um, we have Mary, a presentation about me, student survey. I'm going to do proficiency lessons and start yeah. special person interview. Yes, Mary. Okay, uh, I will try all strategies to create Alma saying and maintain the classroom community, getting to know her students. Awesome, Alma. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, think about class like a blind date. <laughs> I love that image and it is so true. The scheduler fixes all up with each other and we need to progress up safely. Okay, so we have green light, student survey, los super estudiantes. I love, I love this. I just um student survey rocks. Yes, it does. It's it's gonna help you so much. Can't have any jobs. I can't give any job that will have yeah, we can do classroom jobs this year. I, I totally understand. I was just making that connection for uh Samantha because like I said, it didn't work out for me the first year, but I tried it a second year and then it was it was great. Uh green, everything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so, you, Stephanie. That, that was great. So what? I feel like this is amazing. I feel like I hope that you find some, uh, just feel empowered because as Berta said, there are tons of things that we cannot control. Tons, tons of things that we cannot control as teachers. You cannot control how many kids, if we're going to do hybrid or not. But there's some control that we have, and it's how we connect with our students. And it is extremely important that we have those strong connections so everybody, you and them, feel safe to really drive and grow in the proficiency journey. So this is, a, before we go, we are super excited. Also yes, because we have so many people. We have so many people at Conference in the Cloud who joined this group. So if you were at Conference in the Cloud and you met us at uh, Conference in the Cloud and you joined this group, well, this news are for you because you know the people at the Cloud were asking us and we have a lot of friends who have, you know, spread the news about our course. So Claudia and I launched a course uh, last month and it was very successful. And we have people who, who have completed it and, and, you know, they're just saying wonderful things about it. And we have people who are interested in it. So we are going to be opening the doors to uh, purchase that course in case you're interested. And we want to let you know about that. Um, we're going to be opening the doors for for it to be um, so that you can get it if you want it. Uh, when is it that we have it officially open, Claudia? So we are going to open it. To, uh, to, we need to start uh, uh, making some changes and we're working on it and we're hoping to have everything ready for next Tuesday. Uh, but basically, we have heard this 
a challenge. And we've heard that a lot of teachers kind of find themselves doing comprehensible input and acquisition driven instruction in the novice level and they feel pretty comfortable. But when they go to the intermediate level, there is like this big concern about not being challenging enough or not be you no know, focusing on grammar enough or how can i be you know engaging and also cover my curriculum and prepare my kids for ap and uh, how can i prepare my kids for ib and i'm Bertha is an AP teacher and I'm an AP and an IB teacher and we have done it. So with that in our minds is they, that's how this course was created is to address that concern for those of you who really want to be more comprehensible input and acquisition driven uh, teachers in um, and replicate that in your classroom. It is what well, we created uh, this for you. And, and, so, and it's about, it's a little bit, it's uh, the course is about five hours plus of content. And then we have uh, bonus videos that are each an hour long from uh, um, that, that you can also uh, use to, to learn as well. And we built a separate uh, Facebook community for, for uh, this course. And we show up for our Facebook community for the revamp your intermediate courses um, students and we coach them in a group format. And so if you would love to join us, uh, we have, we will be gonna be opening that up pretty soon. And um, I don't have the link, Claudia, do you have the link that you can share? Yes, I have the link. So I am putting the link, at, I mean, you should be so proud of me, Berta. I am usually not very good at multitasking if I can, if I if I'm talking, I cannot be copying links or doing this because I'm always like messing it up, but I'm doing it. So I think if you can see right now on the comments, you will see the um the link. Here, the link. <laughs> it just takes me a little bit. Okay, here it is. Okay. So I just post the link there, but uh, just sign up. We were gonna send you uh, updates. And thank you so much for coming uh, today. We hope that you are empowered with these three uh, strategies to recall to really rock that first week with no stress. It's one hour and sixteen minutes, Berta. How we do? All That's what all happens time. when Claudia Elliott and Berta Delgadillo get together. They just go over time. They just, you know, we just feel so comfortable. It's it's a very informal chat but you know yet packed with a lot of uh, actionable ideas and uh i'm just happy that we we started with about 35 people we have 31 right now i mean i'm just like thank you guys thank you so much um i look forward to seeing you next wednesday next wednesday we are gonna have heidi truth over here with us and she is going to give us some fantastic ideas and to how to uh engage our students and actually bring the world to our classroom e virtually because i know that i am big on you know bringing the community to my classroom uh, but that's not going to be possible this next semester but yet we can still build those amazing experiences for our students and i look forward to learning from heidi so you know go ahead and pencil it up on your agenda at 6 p.m eastern time next wednesday and we will see you over here and thank you so much for spending your time with us. Claudia, thank you so much for coming to spend some time with, uh, you know, our Facebook community over here at, at Transformation. So I'm so grateful for your friendship and it, it's been a, a blast today. So it is. It has been it has been so fun. Thank you, Kate. Uh, we have Stephanie saying, oh, I didn't even think it didn't feel like it was one hour. So <laughs> one hour so thank you thank you i hope you have a great evening and we will see you soon all righty until next time until next time bye ciao nos vemos